Hi, I'm William Peters, Production Manager of the Wisconsin Trigger Company, and this is video number two of our MK2 installation series. Today we're going to be going over removal of the old trigger system and installing and setting the second stage on your new one. So the tools we're going to be needing is a flathead screwdriver or an Allen wrench for your pistol grip, whichever one you need. You're going to want a small hammer and a small punch for driving pins out. You're going to need an Allen wrench for setting the second stage disconnector and also some disassembly pucks are very useful for capturing runaway pins. First things first, we're going to remove the pistol grip here and this one happens to require a flathead screwdriver. Some of them may take an Allen wrench. So let's go ahead and take that out. Now as you get this loose, you want to keep an eye on the detent and the detent spring. They like to fly all over the place. I take those and set them over to the side. Knock the detent pin out. Set that over to the side as well. Now you're going to be able to slide your safety selector switch out. As long as the hammer is cocked. It won't come out if it's not cocked. So go ahead and pull that out. Set that off to the side. Now you're going to want to grab your disassembly puck and we're going to begin driving the pins out starting with the hammer. Decock it first so it doesn't fly out of there and hurt you. Take the punch and the small hammer and carefully tap them out. Remove the hammer. Set that to the side. Now we can take the trigger out. That also can go off on the side. The old pins, we're going to save these because they are very useful for fitting the new trigger. Like I mentioned before, the other pins are oversized and they will cause wear and tear if you remove them way too many times than you need to. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. We're gonna take a look at what you get in the MK2 box here. Up first, we have your guarantee card. Now we will cover any triggers we make, any, any triggers that have been previously made by Malazzo Krieger Accuracy Products Incorporated. After that, we have the installation and fine tuning manual. This is very important, and if you haven't read through it yet, you probably should. A lot of useful information in there. Next, we have the spring chart. Very handy, we will get to that in a second in this video. Uh, after that, we have a couple of fun things, a magnet, a sticker, and another sticker. Uh, we got some foam here, which isn't gonna be too useful for any of the installation. But under that, we have all of the fun parts. We have your trigger housing, the hammer, a bag of springs, and the pins you're going to need for all this. Before you begin your final installation, you might want to take a look at the included spring chart here. It'll help you decide which disconnector you'd like in your trigger, and this is just a little something you can do to fine tune it. With the three springs that are included, you can set your second stage pull weight for your particular preference. The MK2 comes pre-assembled with the blue spring at about four and a half pounds but you also have the option of the red spring and the white, three and a quarter and five pounds respectively. If you decide you'd rather use one of the other springs, here's what you need to do. If you have a Colt model, simply take a flat head or a small punch, or I have a little dental tool here. Grab the bottom of the spring and slide it carefully out so that it doesn't go flying. Set it off to the side. And say you wanna go ahead and put the red spring in there. Take the spring, slide the disconnector all the way forward, and there's a little tab on the bottom of it that you can slip the top of the spring over. Now take your flathead and carefully push it in. And that's all there is to, to the Colt model. The standard pin model becomes even easier. We have a small set screw on the bottom that all you need to do is remove. Now 
And there it is. Now go ahead and take your white spring. And simply screw it back in. Okay, once you have it firmly seated in there, you're gonna to wanna to drop a couple of drops of blue or red Loctite on it, and screw the plug in until it is flush with the bottom of the trigger floor. If you go in too far, you can preload the disconnector spring. This will add some pull weight. If you go way too far in, you can coil bind the spring and the trigger will feel like a rock when you squeeze it. If you don't thread it in enough, the plug will interfere with the bottom of the receiver and the trigger might not move freely. So screw it in flush, no more, no less. And that's all there is to changing the disconnector springs. First we'll be putting the springs on the trigger and hammer. You can set the pins aside. We actually won't need those again until video three. And the only springs we need out of the spring bag are the trigger spring and the hammer spring. Okay, before we do that though, I'd like to show you a little something about the Colt models. So take the receiver we just emptied out, and you're gonna notice that if you try to put the trigger in the way it currently comes, it will not fit past the sear block. And this is not necessarily true for all Colt models, but variations in the way they made, made the sear block and installed it, sometimes it is an issue. So if that is the case, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your trigger tail and it grind it down a little bit. I already did it with this unit here and this fits past. So we're actually gonna put the spring on this one and set that one off to the side. Like so. And the hammer spring. These can be a little bit tricky, so take your time and make sure you don't bend or warp these spring at all. Okay, like so. Now, grab your original pins, the ones that you saved from your old system, and we're gonna drop the trigger in the unit and make sure they don't go flying around on you. Because they're not fun to chase around the floor, trust me. Okay. Do a little bit of wiggling. And it is in. Now we're gonna line up the holes here. and these should fit in pretty easily. There, now your trigger is in. Grab your hammer, while retaining all the pins again. Make sure the spring legs are bent down over the bosses of the trigger. Now you're gonna take one hand to start lining it up. Grab your pin, because this part can be a little bit tricky. Now we line it up. Ooh, I thought I had it there. Try that again. All right. Might need to give it a little bit of a whack here to get it past the C-clip. Check the other side. 
and we're good. Everything is in. So that's what it'll look like once you have it installed. Now comes the fun part, setting the second stage. You're going to want to cock your hammer. And what we're going to be looking for is a thing called the zero point. And I'll explain what that is shortly, but first grab your Allen wrench. All right, so we got that installed in the receiver here. For this next part, I mean, we're gonna start setting the disconnector for second stage. I'm gonna switch to something that's gonna be a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing here. So this is our demonstration cutaway model, and it shows you all the internals and stuff here. You may have seen it in the first video when I had it out. Anyways, this next step is gonna be concerning this screw right here, the disconnector screw. We're gonna be locating the zero point and what that is, is the exact point at which this trigger loses its second stage. As you can see, it's already got some engagement there. It's coming up against the wall. What we want to do is turn this screw in until that is eliminated. Do it little bit by little bit. And you're going to be able to visually check and see how close you are to that point. Make sure if you're using this on a receiver without a pad or anything like we have in here, you want to keep the hammer captive so that it doesn't damage any of, uh, any of the walls on your receiver. And again, notice how, how small increments I'm making here. It may seem tedious, but it's all part in getting the most finely tuned trigger you can get out of it. We're getting very close here. I can feel it starting to snag. Just a little bit more should do it. Oh, very close. And there it is. You can see at this point, I have lost my second stage. It is falling with zero contact on the disconnector. At this point, what you're going to want to do is take your Allen wrench and now turn your screw out three-eighths of a turn. And this little handy tool here has the increments already mapped out for me. With this three-eighths of a turn out, you now have your second stage set where we recommend it for the factory. So feel that a few times, get used to the way it, uh, it breaks. And I would like to remind you that under no circumstances should you set that any less than three eighths of a turnout. This will cause an unsafe condition in the firearm. If, however, you'd like to turn it out more than three-eighths of a turn, feel free to do so. Just be aware that it will change the feel of the brake before it's been described as the difference between snapping an icicle or a carrot. Now that you've got that set, you're going to want to go back to your Loctite. We recommend 2760 here. You can also use red Loctite 277 or if you have it, blue 242. However, it will not stand up to heat as well. For this, you're gonna want a small little pin. Take your pin, make a little mark on the top of your screw right there. Line it up with a point on the receiver that you can find again because you're going to be screwing this out about four turns. One, two, three, four. And that'll give you enough engagement with the Loctite to get it all the way in there without going too far and gooping up the bottom of the disconnector. 
I'm not going to actually put Loctite on here because like I said, this is our demonstration model. But after you get the Loctite on there, you take it, you screw it in four turns. One, two, three, four, and take a look at the mark you made on the top and it should be lined up with the spot you had before and I can see here it is. And that's all there is to it. You set, let it set and dry as per Loctite's instructions and we'll get back to that after it's done. Well that concludes video two here. In video number three, we'll be going over setting over travel, some other fine tuning adjustments, as well as care and maintenance instructions. Thanks for watching.